Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining me with Living Room Live. I'm still in my living room. I thought I was going to be outside doing it because it was brighter outside than it was inside the house. I woke up this morning, early this morning, with no electricity. The power was off in our neighborhood. I don't know what caused that. We had that last week when we had a fire. Um, our power went out and they evacuated us. No problems though. They got the fire out. No homes were damaged and etc. So that was good. But it's always a shock when you wake up and you don't have power. And I thought about light. Light is a way of seeing power. And we need, we always need light. Um, one of my first thoughts was today I was going to be doing this uh, message and I can always go outside because you know we have places we can set up outside and such it's not it's not as quiet and peaceful you might hear a chicken from across the street or a car driving by or various things um, so it's a little a little bit more isolated here in my house but we could have gone outside but I was glad when the lights came on I was also glad because I needed to do my hair I need to take a shower and do my hair I thought oh brother what am I gonna do but God is so good he wants us all to look good praise God but I remember as a kid running down the hall, my folks said, quit turning the hall light on. You know, my, my parents were uh, raised us after the war and we were, um, we always learned to turn lights off when we didn't need them and running, going down the hall to go to bed was not a time I needed to have a light on according to my parents. And so I used to run down the hall. I think I thought the boogeyman was going to get me, but instead I was, sometimes I would stub my toe on a chest that was in the hall or maybe a toy I had left or various things. And, and, uh, you know, that's not nice. It's not fun to run in the dark. It's not even fun to walk in the dark sometimes. And, and so we just need to appreciate light. And I want to talk about how light comes today. Uh, right now we're living in a, in a world with situations going on here in the United States and especially Afghanistan and other nations where there's a lot of issues, a lot of problems. There's a lot of darkness going on. And we can focus on that. We can look at that darkness and totally miss what God is doing. I love to hear the good reports. And I know, I know we need to be aware of the things that are happening. Right now we need to be um, especially praying about some things. I have some prayer requests I'd like to share with you. And um, we need to be praying about some things. But um, we can't focus on the dark. We can't focus on that. Um, in fact, to focus on dark is no focus at all. Because your eyes can't see in the dark. And our spiritual eyes don't see if all we are looking at is dark. We need the light to see to comprehend what's happening. So I want to talk about how light comes. You know, darkness is the absence of light. And even in the darkest times and the darkest places, if there's just a small little bit of light, it'll shine so bright, bringing direction, bringing guidance, even in a dark place. I remember going one time to um, uh, Oregon on the way up, we went uh, to some caves. Danny took us to some caves. We walked through the caves and uh, did a tour. And the tour guide, of course, they you know they're always into this. Um, they all any any cave you go into with a tour, they almost always do this. They turn off all the lights to show you what dark really looks like. And if you have a watch on with a light on it, they ask you to cover that up. Or today they would do it with her with your phone. Please cover your phone up. Don't let there be any light come forth. And in in this absolute darkness, you could almost feel it physically and I think so many believers are feeling the darkness spiritually right now and we need to let light shine we need to go ahead and have light on situations and realize that this is not the end of it so if you would turn with me to Isaiah chapter 60 we're going to be starting there this morning in Isaiah 60 we don't have to be afraid of darkness we just need to let our light shine and let it shine for other people and such. But in um, Isaiah 60 verse 2 tells about a situation. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Well, we are seeing darkness, not natural darkness, but we are seeing darkness covering the earth right now. There is um, a lack of light 
and there's evil people, wicked things happening, horrific things happening, even in, in the face of situations that should not have existed in Afghanistan. Um, there's even continual darkness trying to hinder Christian people, uh, helping others out of the country, trying to get them to safety, uh, preserving their lives and, and settling them places. And darkness is trying to come to even stop that, even within our own government here in the States. This is happening, and it's a very sad case, but we cannot focus on that. We all need to be focusing on what God wants us to do. And if I can just, just say this, I was listening to a report on Truth and Liberty from last night, and there were two gentlemen that were being interviewed specifically on that program. One was Glenn Beck, and the other one is David Barton. They are with, um, they joined together with a group to go and help get these precious people out of Afghanistan. Um, over just a short period of time, they were able to raise a huge amount of funds that could go ahead and, and lease or rent planes to fill up to get these Christians out of the country, out of danger, and transplant them other places. And what, what a blessing to be able to do that. But they had hindrances. They had, they had opposition. In the face of doing good, there was still opposition. Remember, darkness tries to prevail. This verse says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness the people. So not only does darkness try to cover the earth with... Um, viruses and wars and rumors of war and such, but it, but it actually takes a hold of people and manipulates people. People that aren't walking in the light are walking in darkness, and they'll do some dark, evil things. And we need to go ahead and, and pray for them, forgive them, turn them loose, believe God for their salvation, those that are doing wicked and evil things. Always love the people, hate the sin, love the people. And so we need to pray for those that are being used by the devil to cause so many issues and so many problems right now. Keep that um, in your prayers and pray for, pray for great revival to happen. So in, in doing so, in transporting these people on these planes and relocating them in these nations, they had, uh, I know of two nations they went to, with flights where they were going to be accepted and receive notice, I believe, in route that they were not going to be allowed to um, land in those in those countries, and it was horrific. Um, but the good news was, and I, and I thought this was so cool, there was a gentleman that wanted to go with him with them to the Middle East. Now they couldn't see any rhyme or reason why this man should be going on this trip and he didn't have quote unquote anything to offer or didn't have a purpose in going. He just wanted to go. He felt in his heart he wanted to go. He wanted to be there. So in the in the middle of this, when they found out um, after they were there and after they were trying to um, uh, get these people out that um, he knew people in other countries. He said, well, well, let me contact some, some of my contacts in these other nations to see if they can take some of these refugees and help them and, and so on. And they said, well, well, who do you know? He said, well, I know the president of this nation. I know this person in that nation. And God pl had placed this man in a position to open doors that neither Glenn or David Barton could have opened because they didn't know these people. But God had hooked this gentleman up and had relationships with these people that could open up their nations and take these people in. And, and they did just that. It was a miracle, miracle after miracle in transporting and getting these people out. And I forget the exact number. And I don't want to exaggerate, but I believe it's somewhere between twelve and 15,000 people they were able to get out. They have not been able to get out all the, all the Christians, so we need to continue praying for Christians that are still in Afghanistan. I'm sure there's some Americans that are still there. Also, as well, they may be Christian Americans, but please, let's be praying for those, those situations. But knowing that God is doing miracles, He loves people. Even though, beholding that the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. It says deep darkness. How sad to have deep darkness covering people. 
So light needs to shine, and we're going to get to that in a few minutes. These verses we're going to come back to later, so you may want to put something in these verses to keep them just for you. But let's go ahead and pray for Afghanistan, for these people that are, are exiting and, and um, coming out to safety. Um, also for, for the United States of America, that she our, um, our leaders will come to their senses and do something right or be removed if they can't, because that is what God will do. Praise God. And one of the things I think they, had, I think it was David Barton shared, or one of them had shared, these believers are so on fire and are so excited about what God is doing on this earth and are excited about having a relationship with the Lord Jesus. They are very um, much evangelizing. They did in Afghanistan where, where they were there. And wherever they're going to be planted, they are going to be on fire. They are going to be a blessing to those nations. They're going to share the gospel because they've come out of a bad situation and they have seen the hand of God in their nation and upon them to help them while they were there and also in their being planted someplace else. So let's go ahead and be thankful for that. How exciting to see and to have an attitude that wherever they go, they're going to share Jesus because that's what this is all about. Praise God. So, Father, right now we pray for Afghanistan. Father, we thank you for a cleansing of that whole nation in the name of Jesus. Father, we know that that nation was the fastest growing nation for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we know that this has been uprooted. And, Father, may these, may these blessed people share the gospel and be free to share wherever they go, wherever they land. May they be a blessing to those communities. May they acclimate to the cultures and, and learn the languages where they are. And Father, thank you for these nations accepting them and helping them. And Father, for continued financial support to get the job done, to finish this job. And thank you, Lord, that for protection for all of the people um, the Afghanis that are remaining in the country. Thank you for a revival. Thank you for the Taliban and for ISIS getting, um, hearing the gospel and responding that darkness would leave their lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for protection. You are so good. And we just love you and we appreciate you, Father. Thank you for this day you've made. We ask you, Father, to open the eyes of our understanding to teach us your word today. We thank you, Lord God, that even there is darkness and extreme darkness upon people. We thank you that light can shine and you are a blessing. We refuse to be upset. We will not be discouraged, but Father, we will be encouraged in the name of Jesus. Praise God. You know, fear and discouragement, um, depression, hopelessness, these are all symptoms from having your eyes focused on the wrong thing. Like I said, if you're looking at darkness, you're really not focused because you don't, you need to have light to focus. And so don't look at darkness. Don't look at what's happening, but look at the good things that are coming. Focus on that. Pray about the darkness, but praise God. We have authority and dominion over that in the name of Jesus. Darkness is simply the absence of light. So let's turn the lights on. Praise God. So let's go ahead and look at Ephesians chapter 5, and I want to read it to you in the New King James Version, but also I want to go to some other translations today with some verses I'm going to be reading. But in Ephesians chapter 5, and we're going to start with verse 8. For you were once darkness. You know, just think about it. We, it says we weren't in darkness, we were darkness. That's talking about our spirit man. We were once darkness, but now, everybody say now, this is the good news. You are light in the Lord, walk as children of light. For the fruit of the spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather oppose them. God has given us as light the ability to oppose darkness. I mean, there is a, a battle going on. There's two kingdoms, the kingdom of our God and the kingdom of this world. And worldly kingdoms are dark. And we oppose that by, by being light to them. Praise God. 
um, verse 13 says, But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. So light shows up darkness, reveals lies, reveals uh, wickedness and evil things that happen. So light needs to come forth, praise God. But it says, You were once darkness. In the um, Passion Translation, let me pull this up. Thank you, Jesus. Isn't it fun to be able to do these on our phones? But Ephesians 5, and we're going to read verse 8 in the Passion Translation eventually here. Sorry about that. Verse 8. Once your life was full of sin's darkness, but now... You have the very light of our Lord shining through you because of your union with Him. I love that. Because of our union with Him, we have light shining through us. Your mission is to live as children flooded with His revelation light. Oh, goodness. Think about floodlights. Ever see these great big huge floodlights that they put on things or they're going to have some kind of a grand opening and they have these big floodlights and you can see them for miles and miles up into the sky. Bright, bright lights. It gets your attention. Praise God. And that's how we are. And our mission is to live as children flooded with His revelation light. Knowing Him, being excited about what God is doing on this earth. Now let's go ahead and look at Colossians and chapter 1 and verse 13. One thirteen says in the New King James, He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Now let me stop there for a moment. There is power in darkness. Don't think just because you can't see something in darkness, there's not power there. There is power in darkness. It, it controls people, lies to people. I heard um, my son saying, he was speaking to somebody, and he thought that all of these accusations and, and actually light coming forth about what was happening in other countries and in our nation were just made up stories to get people to not like a certain party or, or to oppose this person or that person person. But these are actual factual things that are happening right now. And we can't be ignorant of them. He was thinking there was deception going on. Why? Because he was in darkness. It says, he, God has delivered us from the power of darkness. We're delivered from the power of darkness. We've been set free, praise God, and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. That's called the agape love of God. Now in, um, Let's see, the Message Bible, I want to read that verse to you, and that's 113. Might take me a few minutes to find a few things here. God rescued us from the dead end alleys and dark dungeons. What a picture is that? Ever turned down the street and found out that it was dead end, it didn't go anywhere. And some, some of us have lived lives like that, where we've started on a path we thought was the right direction, and boom, dead end, didn't go anywhere at all. And dark dungeons, boy, that's just bondage. That's when you've been locked up and thrown in some place that's dark. He set us up in the kingdom of the son he loves so much, the son who got us out of the pit we were in, and got rid of the sins we were doomed to keep repeating. He set us free. Praise God. He he took us out of the kingdom of darkness and brought us into light. Now let's go ahead and turn to 1 Peter chapter 2. First Peter 2 and we're going to read verse 9. But you are a chosen generation. You are chosen by God. Think about it. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. Boy, we're a purchased people. God has purchased us, our lives, with the blood of his own son. Jesus had to die to purchase our lives that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness. God has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. 
He doesn't take you out of something without bringing you into something better. Some people think, yeah, but I like this situation, or I mean, it's bad, but it's, it, it, it could be worse. And sometimes people don't know how good something can be until they're out of it completely. He's called you and me out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now, that is how the New King James says it. And I want to go ahead and look that also up. 1 Peter 2.9 And read this to you. But you are the ones chosen by God. You are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him, to tell others of the night and day difference he made for you. From nothing to something, he took you from rejection to being accepted. Boy, what a story. That's the story of our lives. If we need to go ahead and write something about our lives, that's what we do. Um, one time I spoke at a Women's Aglow. Um, I forget where it was. And there was, hey, they had put an ad in the paper for the Women's Aglow. And they had my name, but they had the wrong um, bio or the wrong information about me. They said, I have, I have been raised from the dead. And they had all this story about me. And here are these people waiting to hear the story about how I was raised from the dead. So I have that. I have a death experience. I was born into darkness. I lived in darkness. And I was, I was in darkness because he called me from darkness into his marvelous light. So that was what I told them. I kind of laughed about the testimony in the, in the newspaper. But then I shared about my healing and it, we had a wonderful meeting. But it's true. All of us have that same testimony. He took us from darkness into light. He took us from on our way to hell or on our way to these dead end lives. And he brought us into life in Christ Jesus. It is a journey that is exciting and fun. And I hope you're holding on to your hat because it can be a wild ride. It's a wonderful ride. Um, a few years ago, I was visiting um, our friends in Colorado and their son took us on this rafting trip. And, and I didn't have a hat with me, so Linda loaned me her her California hat. It was one of her favorite hats. And I was wearing the hat and boy, we hit, we hit a wave. The water was getting all these rapids and stuff. And, and we were all bouncing around and boom, my hat went flying off and we didn't get it back. And I feel bad. I didn't get, I lost her hat for her, but, but when it says, hold on to your hat, I mean, hold on to your life, hold on to your confession, hold on for an exciting life in Christ Jesus, because this is a life that we live. You say, well, my life doesn't see, seem to be very exciting. Well, get out there. Now, I didn't get to enjoy that wild ride on the river until I climbed in the boat. So let me say, climb into God's boat, hang on, go talk to people about Jesus, ask God who you can minister to, ask God to, to send somebody to you, make phone calls, just, you can make your life exciting when you share the gospel because it's a good life. So what happens if they reject, reject you? Well, they're not rejecting you. They're literally rejecting Jesus. You, know, you just go ahead and you lovingly share. Please watch your language. Don't use this, you know you're going to hell type attitude because inside they already know that. But you need to tell them that God so loved them, he sent Jesus. And Jesus has an awesome life for them to live. All they need to do is to believe on the Lord Jesus and they can be saved. They can be healed, delivered, set free, made prosperous, blessed. Not a dead end journey of a life anymore. And you think, well, sometimes it's hard to, to talk to people, especially some people just have so much. Well, if they don't have Jesus, they have nothing. We can talk to anybody, anytime. And let me say this. Anybody ever pray? Have you guys prayed today? Have you prayed in the last month? I'm sure you have. You, when you have prayed, you have talked to the creator of heaven and earth. There is no one else in any higher of a position than God, your father. And you have an inheritance. You are not only an ambassador, but you're a child of God. You represent or represent 
Jesus on this earth. So please don't think that you don't have anything to share. You have everything to share with anyone and everyone. I think it's amazing sometimes because of positions or education or financial status, we think it's hard to talk to those people. It's probably easier. It's easier because they're very aware that having these things is not providing what they really want in life. So be bold with your life. Remember, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Ah, I love it. Um, that you may proclaim the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. What if that's your testimony, you can share it with people. They may not like your testimony, but they can't argue with you because it's yours. Praise God. I found out um, witnessing to Jehovah's Witnesses was really easy. They're not really Jehovah's Witnesses. I won't go into that, but it's, it's, not, it's not part of the church. Jehovah's Witnesses is not a Christian organization. And that's really sad. It's, it's a false religion. They need to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ himself. But one of the things they can't do is argue with your testimony. You can argue scripture, and I tell you what, they are prepared with their comebacks. And that's how they've trained them, especially to talk to Christians. And they've persuaded and twisted things up, and it's really sad. You don't have to know everything they believe. Know your testimony and share that with them. They don't believe in healing. They don't believe in the power of God. They don't see the Spirit of God moving. And you can just share your testimony. If you've been healed, share that with them. They cannot argue with you. So I have been healed of multiple sclerosis, and I just love to tell them about that because they have nothing to say back. They'll try to go back to the end times and, and what they've been trained in. But I always go back to now our lives with God and my life with God and I share with them I talk about the goodness of God and and they don't know the goodness of God because they don't know our God so share with them and see some exciting things your life can be so exciting and so bright it's wonderful how fun is that in first John I would like for us to turn there next first John and chapter 1 we're going to read verse 5 and I want to look it up in the New King James 1 John 1, 5 says, This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. In God there is no darkness. There's, there's no darkness in heaven. There's probably not even shadows. You think, well, there must be shadows of such bright light, but there's light everywhere. So there's no shadows because God is there. In him is light, and there is no darkness whatsoever at all. So there's only goodness with God. And God loves you, and he wants to bring you into his goodness. Praise God. In um, the Message Bible, let's see, verse 5. This, in essence, is the message we heard from Christ and are passing on to you. God is light, pure light. There's not a trace of darkness in him. And when you're in Christ, there's not a trace of darkness in you, in your spirit man. You are wholly accepted before God. You are complete in Him, praise God. So let's go back. I hope you um, put a marker in Isaiah chapter 60. I forgot to do that, but I'm sure I can find it eventually here. Praise God. Isaiah chapter 60, almost there. Because we're going to go ahead and read verses 1 through 3. And then I have some other versions I want to read for you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah chapter 60, 1 through 3 says, Arise and shine. Oh, now we just read verse 2 there. But verse 1 says to you, Arise, shine. For your light has come. Light has come. Light comes. You know, we look at how God created. The first thing he did was he said, light be, and light was. So light comes. So arise and shine. Get up. Shine forth. For your light has come, and the glory of the Lord, that's the manifested presence of God, is, has risen upon you. You carry the light of God. You carry the anointing of God. 
God's presence is not only upon you, but within you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. People are looking for shining lights in this world. And, and even if you don't talk to people, let your light shine. Let your light shine in your family, your friends, wherever you go. And his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light. A Gentile is someone who doesn't believe in God, doesn't know Jesus. And kings to the brightness of your rising. So it talks about Gentiles and talks about kings. Now it even talks about those that are in authority. Kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Praise God. And it says, lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. And it says, your sons will come from afar off. Your daughters shall be nursed at your side. Then you shall see and become radiant and your heart shall swell with joy because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. Wow, this is a whole great big turning. This is exciting. Now, I want to go ahead and read this first out of the Message Bible. We'll read verses 1 through 6. Get out of bed and wake up. Put your face in the sunlight. God's bright glory has risen for you. The whole earth is wrapped in darkness. All people sunk in deep darkness, but God rises on you. His sunrise glory breaks over you. Nations will come to your light. Kings to your sunburst brightness. Look up, look around. Watch as they gather, watch as they approach you. Your sons are coming from great distances and your daughters carried by their nannies. When you see them coming, you'll smile big smiles. Your heart will swell and yes, burst. Praise God. All those people returning by sea for the reunion, a rich harvest of exiles gathered in from the nations. And then it goes on, it talks about some more things. But let's go ahead and look at the New Living Translation. And verse 1, Arise, let your light shine for all to see, for the glory of the Lord rises to shine on you. Darkness as black as night covers all the nations of the earth, but the glory of the Lord rises and appears over you. All nations will come to your light. Mighty kings will come to see your radiance. Now let's look at the Amplified Version. I think you're getting the picture. I hope you're seeing it. Praise God. Arise. This is the Amplified Bible. We're in um, Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 5 now. Arise from spiritual depression to a new life. I thought that is a good example. People are looking at the wrong thing. They're not moving around. Some people are just stuck at home, different situations. They can't go to work. The kids weren't able to go to school, all of these things. And it says there's a spiritual depression. So it says, arise from spiritual depression to a new life and shine. Be radiant with the glory and brilliance of the Lord, for your light has come. Your light has come. You're going to make it. You're going to do well. And the glory and brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. For in fact, darkness will cover the earth and deep darkness will cover the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you and his glory and brilliance will be seen on you. Nations will come to your light. Say, well, how can nations come to my light? Well, here, at least here in the United States, we have a lot of different um, nationalities here. We have different cultures, we have different people groups, and you can just go in the grocery store and talk to all kinds of different people, it's amazing. So as nations will come to your light, people are gonna come and say, what's different about you? I, had, um, I was working in the beauty shop and we had a customer that would come in and she was just different. She just, she was different. She was a believer, she wasn't a wacky person, but there was a light about her that I didn't know. And I remember taking her to lunch one day. I asked her if she could have lunch with me and she said, sure. <laughs> and um, she packed her bag and she was ready for me, praise God. So we sat at Jimmy's Mexican Food, it's called Marla's now in Beaumont, but we sat there and I said, 
there's just something different about you. I want to know what it is. And she smiled a big old smile. Carolyn Cook could smile a smile. And she said, it's the Holy Spirit. See, I was born again. I accepted Jesus as my Savior, but I wasn't filled with the Spirit yet. And she says, it's the Holy Spirit. I said, okay, I'd heard about the Spirit of God. I didn't know anything at all about the Holy Spirit, but I was going to find out. And so she had this, she had, had brought this big satchel with her, and she pulls out this great big book, and it was called The Holy Spirit and His Gifts by Kenneth E. Hagan. She said, just read this book. And when he gets to the place where you can pray to receive the Holy Spirit, pray that prayer. And she told me just how to go ahead and ask to be filled and receive the Holy Spirit and to start speaking in other tongues. I had no clue what that meant, but I knew what she had, I wanted. I wasn't jealous, but I wanted to, I wanted to shine like she was shining. So I remember I took this big book home and I didn't even get through the first chapter and I got on my knees right beside my bed and I, I didn't know how to pray. I didn't know much how to pray, yeah, but I, I prayed the best I could and, and, I, and I asked to receive the Holy Spirit. I said, I welcome you in my life and I just started speaking in tongues. <laughs> this language I never knew. And I found out later on that when you speak with tongues, it says you're speaking to God, first of all. You're speaking per and you're praying perfect prayers. At the same time, you're building yourself up on your most holy faith. You're getting stronger, spiritually speaking, in tongues. And this was a new dimension for me. I attended Baptist Church. I, I really received so much from that church. I was growing in the Lord. But I didn't know this part of God. I didn't know what it was to be filled with the Holy Spirit. When you get born again, the Holy Spirit comes and recreates your human spirit. And He makes it a temple, a holy temple. And He actually prepares it as, as this wonderful place where God can come in. The Spirit of God can come in and dwell. He, he's not in you yet. He's with you. He's recreated you. But when you receive the Holy Spirit, He comes and He fills you. And He gives you power to overcome. He gives you the gifts of the Spirit. He gives you the fruit of the Spirit, all of these things, because He now dwells in you by the Holy, by the, God dwells in you by the Holy Spirit. So receive this gift. If you haven't done that yet, just do like I did. Read, read some scriptures. There's all kinds of books. There's things online you can read about the Holy Spirit. You can go to um, Andrew Womack Ministries, that's A-W-M-I dot net, and he has information there online, uh, or even call his helpline, and you can have somebody pray with you on the phone to be filled with the Spirit of God. God is not keeping His Spirit from you. The only prerequisite, the only thing you must do before you receive the Holy Spirit is be born again. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe what? Believe that He is God, that He died in your place that He took your sin, He broke the power of sin, and He was raised from the dead for your justification, for you being right before God. And just, just believe on the Lord Jesus, and then just pray that prayer. Dear God, I thank You for giving me the Holy Spirit. I ask You right now to fill me with Your Spirit. I receive Him as my helper, and I just so appreciate it. And then just start opening your mouth, and there will be a new language, and every language sounds different. But my language sometimes sounds like this. In fact, Paul said that, that when you speak in tongues, you give thanks well. You're thanking God. You're, you're speaking mysteries unto God. You're actually declaring your future, maybe the future of your family, your nation, as you pray in tongues. You speak in, those, in that new language. And the beautiful thing about this gift is, you can stop anytime you want, and you can start anytime you want. The Spirit of God is not going to take over your life and make you pray in tongues in the grocery store at the top of your lungs and, and make a fool out of yourself. He won't make you pray in tongues in front of your unbelieving family. God doesn't do that. He's a perfect gentleman. But this is a gift God gave to you to build you up, to help you pray when you don't know how to pray. Romans 8 says when you don't know how to pray. The Spirit Himself makes intercession through you with groanings or with articulate speech that you don't understand. That's speaking in tongues. 
it is an awesome gift. So I hope you'll go ahead and receive the Spirit of God today. If you're already Spirit-filled, I want to encourage you to spend some time praying in the Spirit, praying in tongues, because that builds you up. It strengthens you, and it's perfect prayer. We don't know how to pray for our nation. Whatever nation you're part of, you don't know exactly how to pray for your nation, but the Spirit Himself will make prayer through you. Praise God. Well, we're not even finished with these verses yet. Praise God. But in, um, where was I? Verse 4. This is on Isaiah 60, verse 4. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar. Your daughters shall be nursed at your side. And you shall see and become radiant. You're going to become so radiant with the light of God because of what he's doing. And I just want to, again, encourage you to spend some time in prayer. Spend some time with God. Worship him. Take a walk with him. Have some FaceTime with him. <laughs> I heard that one on a call yesterday morning. A FaceTime walk with God. Face to face. Talk with God. He loves you. He's your Heavenly Father if you're born again. And if you're not, you can be part of God's family today. So thank you for joining me. Remember, light comes. It comes to you and it comes through you. Don't shut the door on your light. But let that light so shine so people can be blessed. Amen. So, Father, thank you for today. Thank you for watching over every person that has come online. And, Father, may they have understanding and not being fearful of the darkness of this world. In Jesus' name, amen. One thing before we stop, and that is, I want to show you these rocks. Now, this is not a very pretty rock. It's been cleaned up a little bit, but, but it was muddy and dark and ugly. And so I have another rock, and I want to show it to you also. This rock. And this rock looks a little better. It's got some nice shiny little place here, sort of. But it's not very attractive. And sometimes darkness is not, a, well, darkness is not ever really attractive once your eyes are open. But I just want to show you what's on the inside because this is beautiful. And sometimes we look at people that are in darkness and all we see is this outward part, crusty and hard. But God sees them on the inside. And he wants to polish them up. He wants to make them brand new. And so this is this one. And here is this one on the other side. Ugly on the outside, but check this out. Is that beautiful? You are God's handiwork. This is how God sees you, beautiful and lovely. So let that light shine so we can all see what's on the inside. And we can show forth his marvelous works and his light. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye-bye.